As I'm sure many of you know, Prehistoric Planet is an upcoming series by Apple TV exploring dinosaurs and other flora and fauna at the end of the Cretaceous. In addition to what in my humble opinion is the best T-Rex reconstruction I've seen in any media, and dromies that are truly breathtaking, something that has gotten a lot of buzz is the inflating balloons along the side of the upper neck of their Alamosaurus. Sauropods have long been known to have air sacs throughout their bodies, with particularly intricate and widespread pockets of air in the neck leading to the large sacs and lungs in the torso. These air sacs were central to sauropod size, making them lighter without compromising strength, and also facilitating more efficient respiration. Steve over at Paleoanalysis has a great video on the matter if you're interested in learning more. So here's my hot take. The placement, size, and method of inflation in the prehistoric planet Alamosaurus is actually pretty conservative. It's basically where the air-filled diverticula are known to be based along the vertebrae and on the pathways between nostrils and air sacs and the torso. All this feature suggests is what if the diverticula could be inflated as air went to and from the lungs and air sacs? Plenty of birds get way more derived than this. This sort of display fundamentally signals, hey, my lungs work, and is nowhere near as crazy as you could get while still being plausible. For a couple years now, the fundamental premise has been part of Chimere's titanosaurs. As many of you have noticed, the air sacs on the upper neck of my titans are inflated as part of a range of displays. In juveniles, this is in part to help their mimicry of cobras, and generally makes them look bigger. As they reach adulthood, it also makes them more intimidating all while being well outside of the reach of most predators. The air sacs overall make them incredibly buoyant. Actually, feeding underwater is out of the question given their extreme buoyancy, but Chimere and Titans have an incredibly wide range because swimming is so efficient for them, all thanks to the air sacs, in addition to heavily pneumatized or hollow bones. Since Chimere and Titanosaurs are highly combative, the skin on their necks is thick and fairly elastic. The air sacs are inflating in much the same way as the balloons of prehistoric planet's Alamosaurus, just underneath thick, elastic skin. Since Alamosaurus adults probably weren't fighting each other as much, and didn't have to deal with predators that could reach the air sacs, there was no real reason that they couldn't be inflated and colorful without worrying about damage in the way that Chimera and Titans do. A great signal of a healthy diet given the colors, and clear respiration to inflate them if they're in good health. It's a logical and brilliant element of speculation that I feel speaks to the quality of Prehistoric Planet, and makes me all the more excited about its release next month. Cheers to everybody working on the project, you're really raising the bar for Paleomedia, and I cannot begin to express my delight. That's all for today. Got a Beaver Day special in the works for Thursday, and continuing to work on my now two sponsored videos. Thank you all for watching. Stay fantastic. Cheers, folks!